Good day everyone. Welcome to Prayer Watch. Thank you for joining us today. Let us now begin with a word of prayer. Almighty God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of the universe, the God of our ancestors, our God, our Father in heaven, we do worship and thank you, Lord, this day because you have always been good and your love endures forever. We praise you for this opportunity to once again look into your word that is life, your word that is truth, your word that expresses your love for your people. We ask that you open our minds and soften our hearts that we may hear and as we hear, we obey. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Our scripture reference for today is taken from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 24, verse 14. And the gospel of the kingdom will be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all nations, and then the end will come. Praise be to God for his wonderful words of life. When will the end of the world come? This is a question that many, regardless of faith and religion, have been asking. For Christians, we whose authority is the Bible on matters such as these, we believe what Jesus said about the end times, and that is, no one knows the hour or day of the end, except the Father who is in heaven. But there will be signs and indicators that will precede the end. The, word, the verse that we just read from Matthew 24 is one of the sure signs that will signal that the end is near, which is that when the gospel has been preached, to the whole world as a testimony to all nations, then the end will come. According to the Joshua Project, a research initiative that seeks to study and monitor the nations of the world, the ethnic people groups, with the fewest followers of Jesus, they say that some 42% of the world's 17,258 ethnic groups are still unreached by the gospel. That translates to about 7,217 ethnic groups, or what the Bible refers to as nations, who hardly have viable Christian churches who can do evangelism and missions among their own people. So. There is still a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, work that we Christians and Christian churches have to do. More than 7,200 uh, ethnic groups have yet to receive, to hear the gospel. Now the next question therefore is, how soon can Christians and Christian churches bring the gospel to these ethnic groups. It can be as fast or as slow as the response of Christians and Christian churches to the Great Commission. How soon will the end come? Well, it depends on how soon the gospel will reach this, these still unreached people groups. Now, despite the sermons, the exhortations, and the efforts of mobilization through the years, a large number of Christians and Christian churches are not responding as enthusiastically to the urgency of evangelism, discipleship, and missions as we ought to. So what can we do? What should we do? How can we seriously bring ourselves and our church to jumpstart or sustain missions? The answer, prayer. Jesus said, go and make disciples of all nations. God disciples nations through prayer. Jesus prayed just before his crucifixion that the gospel may reach the unbelievers. Today, let us just focus on some of the critical points in missions that will make us see, indeed, that prayer is key. From the book of Acts, there we will see the breakthroughs that were preceded by prayer. Now, for one, prayer preceded the outpouring of the Holy Spirit for the work of missions. You see, Jesus told his disciples that 
They must wait for the coming of the Holy Spirit to give them the power for missions. So in anticipation of this, the disciples all joined together constantly in prayer as the book of Acts, particularly in chapter 1, tells us. On the day of Pentecost, as the disciples were again together in prayer, the Holy Spirit poured himself upon all of them, making them bold witnesses for Jesus Christ. Prayer preceded the outpouring of the Holy Spirit and his power for the work of missions. Two, prayer preceded the release of signs and wonders to convince unbelievers. Now, in the fourth and fifth chapters of the book of Acts, we read that the disciples prayed to God that they may be able to perform uh, signs and wonders in the name of Jesus Christ so that the people may be convinced of the true power that is working in them. Now, after their prayers, we are told that they were so filled by the Holy Spirit that they spoke God's word boldly and that they performed many signs and wonders among the people. Because of this, crowds gathered around them and brought their sick, the demon possessed. They were healed and more and more came to hear and receive the gospel of Jesus Christ. Three, prayer preceded the miraculous release of Peter from prison and his protection from death. We know that Peter gave the first evangelistic sermon after Jesus' ascension. And he became a key witness and evangelist. And so he was also among the first Christians to be uh, arrested by King Herod and imprisoned to be killed. So Peter was bound with two chains, we are told. He had, there were guards posted at the entrance of the prison cell, and he slept between two guards or soldiers. But as he was in prison, the church earnestly prayed for him. And so in Acts 12, we read that an angel of the Lord woke him up, let loose his chains, led him out of the prison, the prison cell, unseen by the guards who were posted there until he came out of the entrance gate that opened by itself. You see, this, this was a, um, a miraculous sign and a wonder that was uh, preceded by the prayer of the church for Peter. And the rest is history. Peter lived many more years of evangelizing and witnessing, teaching, and doing missions. That was a critical point in the early church's missions effort. Now, four, prayer preceded the sending out of the first missionaries to the ends of the earth. Again, it was after the church prayed and fasted that the disciples were led by the Lord to send Barnabas and Saul, who later became known as Paul, for missions outside of the boundaries of Israel. Just as Jesus had prophesied, the disciples would be his witnesses, beginning in Jerusalem and outward to Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Fifth, Prayer preceded breakthroughs of the gospel to the most resistant people group of that generation, none other than the Jewish nation. The Messiah, God incarnate Jesus Christ, was born a Jew, but many of his own people rejected him. But for the first 3,000 who did receive him and were baptized 
in his name in Pentecost or during Pentecost and who formed the first church. Those uh, first believers devoted themselves to prayer and God's word and to discipleship as we are told in Acts 2. You see, resistant as they were to the gospel because of the consistent prayers, the devotion of the first church to prayers, we are told that that church grew in number and we, are, and we are told that the result was that continuously new believers were added to the church. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, there we have it. Prayer is what you or our church might be in need of at this time. For breakthroughs, if there seems to be a hesitation in even proceeding on the first step of missions. Or perhaps it could be uh, a breakthrough in, uh, or, or rather it could be the need for sustaining grace for those who are already doing missions. It could also be that there is a need for strengthening those who are becoming discouraged by the pressures, the challenges out there in the mission field. For faith, for those who are tempted to give up. For wisdom and protection from pride in the case of those who are going strong in missions. See? So, let us intensify our prayers today for the gospel to be preached in the whole world and all nations, especially for us personally and our own local church to be involved and devoted in the Great Commission. And as we do that, this is what the book of Revelation tells us about what we can expect at the end of the age when we stand before the throne of God. Chapter 7 of Revelation, and particularly in verses 9 to 10, says, After this, I looked, and there before me was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, tribe, people, and language, standing before the throne and before the Lamb. They were wearing white robes and were holding palm branches in their hands, and they cried out in a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God, who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. What can we begin doing today? Pray. Pray for the nations, and together with the whole church, pray for ourselves, for our church. That is how we are able to speak to the nations that their minds may be open, that doors may just be provided for the entry of the gospel, even in the most unaccessible of nations and even the hardest of hearts. And then together we will glorify the God of the nations for all eternity. Uh, shall we pray? Almighty God of the nations, you who will be glorified and be worshipped by people from every tribe, every tongue, every language, every nation. <clears throat> Lord God, thank you for reminding us that in everything we are to pray. There is no substitute, O oh God, for the power that is at work when we communicate, when we connect with you in prayer. Thank you, Lord, for reminding us that when we pray, our hearts are changed. Situations change. The hearts of people, of authorities, of nations are changed. And for the great task of the Great Commission, no less, we need to pray. Father, we ask that... Uh, you provide the opportunities for us individually and for our church to go back to the basics of prayer. There are so many 
nations, O oh Lord, as you said, more than 7,000 are yet unreached by the gospel. But we know that if, even if just each of the millions of churches, of the true churches around the world, will start dedicating ourselves to even just one of these nations, then we will be able to see the beginning of the new kingdom of the new heaven and earth that you will usher for all of us. Lord, I pray that you will, we will just keep on being reminded that it is as simple but as powerful as praying to the Lord of the harvest. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, my dear brothers and sisters, for keeping me company in today's edition. And yes, let us continue to pray, particularly for the gospel to be preached to the whole world. Goodbye for now and see you next time.